Hello, this is Mark from excelofthegrid.com. In this video, we're looking at the sequence function. If you want to work along with the examples in this video, you can download the example file and there are links and instructions in the descriptions box below. However, I must say there's only one example where you need the example file. All the others do start with a blank worksheet. So if you want to download that, go ahead and let's get started. Before we go any further, I'd just like to remind you to subscribe and get notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. The sequence function is one of the new functions which Microsoft released as part of introducing dynamic arrays. This function makes use of changes to Excel's calculation engine, which enables a single formula to display or spill, if you want to use the new terminology, results into multiple cells. In the case of sequence, it will generate a list of sequential numbers in an array. At the time of recording this video, the sequence function is only available to those on Microsoft 365 and it will not be available in Excel 2019 or earlier versions. Let's start by looking at example one. This is a really basic example and will help us understand how the sequence function works. Right, so here we are in cell B2 and all I'm going to type is equals sequence, open bracket, and you can see the arguments there, but I'm going to enter an eight for the rows argument, close the bracket and press return. And as you can see, we get a list of numbers from one to eight. These numbers are all driven by this first cell at the top there. Before we come back to example one, let's have a brief look at the arguments of the sequence function. In total, there are four arguments, rows, which is the number of rows to return, columns, which is the number of columns to return. And if excluded, it will return a single column. Start, that is the first number in the sequence. If excluded, it will start with one. And step, this is the amount that we want to increment by for each subsequent value. And if this is excluded, it will automatically default to one. Right, so let's head back to example one and let's see how we can use all of these arguments. So let's click here in cell B2. And I'll type equals sequence open bracket, and I'm going to go for eight rows, three columns, starting at the number five and incrementing by 10 each time. Close that bracket and press return. There we have our results. So we've created an array which is eight rows, three columns, starting at five and incrementing by 10. Now the order of the numbers is important here because what you'll see is that the function increments across the columns before then moving down to the next row. Okay, now it's time for example two. Example two shows how we can use sequence with the date function. Note that because I'm in the UK, my dates will be in a UK format, so it will come out day, month, and then year. So let's try this formula in cell B2. So equals date, so the date function. And then we have my year as being 2020. Now for my month, I'm gonna type sequence the sequence function, open bracket. Now, even though there's 12 months in a year, I'm gonna type 13, close that bracket, and we'll see what impact that has. I put a comma and then a one. I'm gonna close that bracket and then press return. Let's just format these as dates. There we go. So this formula creates a sequence of monthly dates starting on the 1st of January, 2020. The sequence function has been applied to the month argument. Therefore, it adds one month to each result. Now we've requested 13 months, but Excel is intelligent enough to know that there aren't 13 months in a year. So therefore it rolls over into the next year. So it's created the 1st of January, 2021. Right, now it's time for example three. So as mentioned earlier, the sequence function increments across the columns before going down the rows. To change this, we can use the transpose function. So here in cell B2, I'll type equals transpose, open bracket, and then type sequence, open bracket, and we're gonna go for the same numbers as we had in example one. So eight rows, three columns, starting at five, a step of 10. So we'll close the sequence function, and then close the transpose function, press return. Now these results are exactly the same as what we saw in example one, 
However, this time it's been wrapped in the transpose function, so the numbers increment down before going across to the next column. This can now get a little confusing because the rows argument in the sequence function is actually displaying eight columns, and the column argument is actually displaying the rows. But once we get used to this technique, we just need to remember that the transpose function is always applied last. Okay, let's move on to example four. The sequence function by itself is useful, but when combined with other functions, its power can be clearly seen. On the left, we have our data, and here you can see that there's a mixture of ID and department. So the first row for each person is ID, and the second row is department. Our goal here is to try and get it so we only have a list of the ID numbers for each person. Okay, so I'm gonna start here in cell F3. Now this function is gonna get a bit tricky, but I'm sure we're up to it. So let's go index. Index, the array we're looking for is B3, down to D12. To a comma there. And then the rows we want are each alternate row. So I'm gonna type sequence. open bracket. Now here we have a challenge. I don't want to select all the rows in that array because then that will give me a sequence which has too many items. So what we're going to do is reduce that down by using count A, count A, open bracket. I'm going to select B3 to B12, close that bracket. So that will count anything in those cells and it divided by two. So because we want every alternate number, that will give us a sequence of that many rows. Only need one column, starting at one. But again, we want every other number, don't we? So we want a step of two. Close that, press comma. Then for the final argument of index, we'll have another sequence. Because we want to return all three columns. So we want a sequence that's one row, but three columns. We're happy with the defaults of it starting at one and incrementing by one each time. So we'll then close the index function and press return. So there we have it, all the people with their ID number and their department has now been uh, removed from the list. What we can do just to make this um, even better is if we add the sort function here, which is another dynamic array function. So we're gonna sort by column two, which is the last name, press return. There we have it, a list of IDs sorted by last name. Okay, now let's move on to example five. Let me ask you a question, do you play bingo? No, me neither. And maybe bingo isn't even a game you've ever heard of where you live. It's basically a game that involves pulling 75 random balls out of a container so that people can then cross them off on a board. Now I've never played it, but it does create an interesting example. How can we create a random list of numbers from one to 75, which would be equivalent to the balls that might come out in bingo? So these can't just be 75 random numbers because they have to be unique. To do this, we're gonna use three dynamic array functions together. So sequence, sort by, and rand array. So I'm gonna start up here in cell B2. And let's start with the sequence. So equals sequence. Open bracket, 75 numbers, close bracket, return. There we have a list of 75 numbers, but they're not in a random order yet, are they? So let's go back to our function. And here we're gonna use sort by. So we're saying we want to sort our sequence of 75 by a random array of numbers. So random array. There we go, our press return, and here we have the list of 75 numbers in a random order. Now because we use the sequence function, they're all unique, and then we randomize them. Well, that's all from me today. I hope you found that as a really good introduction to the sequence function. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment and I'll catch you next time.